Hello everyone and welcome back to another Palletful Packs video. My name is Monique Crenet and today I have the October Palletful Packs box with me. I'm going to hop right on in and start looking at these art supplies and the first thing I see here is a cup of Daniel Smith Walnut Ink. I've been wanting to try Dan Smith products for such a long time so oh my gosh oh that is really full Ooh. okay I'm super jazzed about this but I'm gonna put them down before I spill it all over the place next thing we have here is a lovely spread of some paint brushes we've also got a Faber-Castell brush marker which I'm going to guess is also in a brown color oh my goodness guys we have got a dip pen I haven't used a dip pen in years, so I'm a little bit nervous, but also really, really excited because I remember loving using dip pens. So this is gonna be a bit of a throwback for me. This is super, super exciting. We've got a little palette full sticker. This says the walnut edition, and it has a little walnut on it, which I think is super cute. We've got our surface here, which is a drawing little pad of paper. I really love Strathmore paper. I love that they have a nice texture to them. So I think this is going to work really nicely with our pen and our ink. We have our little info card here. We have the Dan Smith or the Daniel Smith Walnut Ink. This is a sepia colored water-based ink. It handles like a watercolor with good layering and lifting capabilities. It can be used nicely with both the paint brushes as well as the dip pen for different effects. So it's gonna be fun to see how the different supplies will work with the ink. We've also got the Walnut Brown brush pen. We've got our Princeton brush golden Taclon set. We've got our Speedball nib set and Speedball pen holder. We've got fine and extra fine nibs. Both will work with this holder and I will show you guys how to insert them. The fun things about these pens also is you can buy lots of different brush nibs and they will work in the same kind of pen holder. And of course we have our Strathmore drawing pad 4x6 size. It has a really nice cream color which I also really enjoy. I think the cream color is going to work really nicely with the browns that we've got. It says that this paper will accept pen and ink as well as pencil, charcoal, and markers. So this is a really versatile paper. And like I did mention, it has a nice tooth to it, which I really enjoy. I find if I use too smooth of a paper with pens, um, it I lose control a bit. But if I have a paper with tooth with a little bit of texture, um, there's a bit more resistance and it's easier for me to work on. So these are our supplies for the October Walnut Ink set. I'm super, super excited, so I am just going to hop right on in and start playing. All right, so here I have my little brush nib holder thingamabob. And basically what you do is you have the nib here. Be careful because they're sharp. I definitely have not uh, accidentally cut myself on one of these before. Shh. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to just take it and there's like this little hole in the holder and you just kind of fit it right in. And then you have a pen. Look at that. So the first thing I'm going to do is take our beautiful walnut ink and I'm just going to dip it, not all the way. You don't want to dip it like all the way to the top because then it makes a huge mess. But you can see kind of just how far I've dipped it in and you're just going to dip. And then you can just start sketching. And this is giving me so much nostalgia because when I when I actually first started my YouTube channel like five or so years ago, I pretty much only used dip pens uh, when I was inking something. So it's really fun to kind of revisit these and it's it's making me feel a certain kind of way. There is something so peaceful about working with dip pens. I'm not sure what it is or why it's so different than working with normal pens, but it just it just hits different and it's so much fun and I love doing like really tiny delicate lines. I love doing cross hatching. Like look at that. It's so pretty. So I'm so excited about the piece I'm going to work on. 
There we go. I want to do a lot of tiny details, a lot of maybe cross hatching, hatching, definitely something with a lot of hair. We have some really awesome prompts this month. We have mushroom, bird, tree, and autumn, and witch. All of those things are things that I love. <laughs> I already draw a lot of witches and a lot of mushrooms, so I may have to draw a cute little mushroom witch, which is something that, again, I draw all the time, but it never gets old, especially in October. So, yes. Something else you do want to make sure of is when you're done using the dip pen, make sure to clean it out and clean it out thoroughly. I have ruined many dip pens because the ink will kind of get like gunked up in some of these areas and then it becomes less easy to use because it's all gunked up and it doesn't write as smoothly. So also on the info card it does say that if you plan to use the ink with heavy washes or with a lot of lifting, you may want to use a watercolor paper instead of this drawing paper. So with that in mind, I'm going to try to keep my washes relatively light. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's so pretty. Wow. Oh, look, it looks sepia. Oh, that is really pretty. That is gorgeous. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. Look at that. Oh, I'm getting so many ideas already. Ah. But I am getting a bit of buckling with the paper. I can feel it. So I do wanna use this technique with just the paintbrushes and creating these beautiful textures, but I am going to have to be careful with that because I don't want to ruin the paper. But I have a sheet of watercolor paper right here and you can see it does a lot less of that buckling. So if you do have water paper lying around, which if you have been with us for a little bit, you should have some spare pieces if you haven't used them all. Uh, you can use this technique with uh, more of a heavy hand and create more layers and more textures and stuff like that. So. Just a little reminder to definitely keep in mind which surfaces you're using because the surface that you use is going to influence the way that your materials react. We've also got our pit brush pen here too. So I'm just going to make some lines with those. Ooh, that is pretty. So this is a lot darker than I was expecting. It's a lot darker than the walnut. So this will be nice if we want to just add a little bit of emphasis some places and create more depth. Plus, this pen is going to be waterproof, whereas this ink is water soluble. That means if I were to run my brush over this ink, it's not going to move, especially if you let it dry for a few minutes. But if I do the same thing over here, you can see that it kind of just melts away. So this is going to be nice because you can create like a softer look, especially if you use less water, but we can also make sure that the places that we want to keep dark will stay dark. See? So using a mixture of both the pens is going to be a really fun technique, I think. Wow, I am getting so many ideas. I am so excited to just kind of lose myself in creating something for a little bit. I know I wanna create something really autumnal because I mean, look at this color. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up drawing some kind of mushroom witch, uh, which probably isn't surprising, but I'm going to do some sketches and some more playing around and then we will get going on the finished piece. So I did end up drawing a mushroom witch. I know, surprise, surprise. I ended up drawing this cute witch with mushrooms growing out of her hat. I think it's super cute, super autumnal and Halloween-y. So I was just really jazzed to work on this. So I first went in with that dip pen and I completely lost myself in all the details. I just, I went for it. I had so much fun working on this. I. I just, I think this is my favorite box from Palette Packs of all time. I just, oh, I love it. But I also wanted to give you guys some pointers on how to use a dip pen because it is surprisingly different than using a like felt or a ballpoint pen. So here are some pointers if you need a little help. Of course, my first pointer is to just 
try and experiment. The best way to learn, of course, is to just go ahead and start playing around. I would definitely recommend doing some little doodles or just trying to write with the pen first to kind of get familiar with it before you try doing anything serious. Another pointer I want to give is to try not to put too much pressure on the pen nib. When I first started using dip pens, I try to use it like a regular pen and I can be a little bit heavy handed with pens because I want to get like a nice thick solid line, right? But with dip pens, if you put too much pressure on the pen, you can actually break it. So the way the pen is designed is there are two kind of little prongs on the end of the pen and you can see that if you're looking at it and this is the way that it allows ink to kind of like go between those prongs and you can write with it. But if you put too much pressure on the prongs, they will actually break and split apart. And when you try to use the nib, if it's broken and split apart, uh, the pen's going to be scratchy, the ink isn't gonna flow well. Uh, sometimes you'll even get two lines when you're trying to draw because those nibs are too far apart. So do be careful. I have broken many, many pen nibs this way because I just wasn't sure. I wasn't aware of the fact that I could break it like that and I just wasn't using it with a light enough hand. So when you are experimenting, try using a really delicate, really light hand. And this can take some getting used to, but trust me, if you practice, it'll become a lot easier. Another thing to keep in mind is the angle at which you are drawing. So the way the pin is designed, again, it's meant to be held kind of at a 45 degree angle from the paper. And this can be a lot different for people too. People who are used to using like a felt pin or like a ballpoint pen, uh, you can kind of draw at any angle and get the same uh, result. But with the uh, dip pen, you really need to hold it at the a certain angle and it's going to uh, give you a better line if you do that. Of course, you can experiment with different angles because if you hold the pen in a different angle, it's going to give you a different result and you may like that. So experiment holding the pen at a different angle to the paper and see which way you like it best. For me personally, I think I get the smoothest line at a bit of a 45 degree angle and that's just what works for me. Dip pens can be so much fun, especially if you get different nibs that will give you different results. So I really recommend that you play around with it and try to make it work for you. It can be a little frustrating at first, I know it was for me, but the more you use it and get comfortable with it, I think the more you'll enjoy it, especially if you enjoy doing tiny details. It just becomes an absolute joy to work with. So now I am adding water to the piece and this was actually new for me because whenever I used dip pens before, I would use the pen and then let it dry for about 24 hours and then once you do that, it becomes pretty much waterproof. But if you use the water directly after you lay the ink down like I did here, it becomes water soluble and you can make these really beautiful subtle textures and the lines can disappear. Uh, I tried to use not too much water because I didn't want the lines to disappear completely. So I used just a little bit of water to kind of smudge the ink around and it made this really, really pretty effect. I also added a background by putting the ink straight onto the paper and feathering it out with some water. Here, the paper did buckle a little bit for me. I used a bit too much water, but it wasn't anything that like ruined the piece. So I would definitely recommend experimenting with how much water you can put on the paper. It did take a bit more than I was expecting, but again, the only way you're going to find out the correct like amount of water to put onto the paper is going to be just experimenting and trying it for yourself. The color of this ink is absolutely gorgeous. It reminds me almost of like coffee or like an antique photo and it was just so oh it gives me such autumn vibes looking at it and it makes me so happy so i think that the color for this ink was such a good choice and it's so beautiful and i've already used it a few more times on my own in like my personal time i just i'm in love with this box and all the supplies in it so oh just oh, love another thing i did do was i went in with the pit pen and 
where I knew I wanted a line to like not move and I wanted the line to be darker than the whole piece uh, is where I put the pen. So I did that for the eyes and I did that on the hat because I knew I wanted those places to stand out from the rest of the piece. So they ended up looking darker and the lines weren't getting smudged when I laid down the water. So if you want a part of your piece to not move or to stand out, that is where I would use the pen. So for example, if you wanted the subject to stand out from the background, I would lay the pen there, or if you wanted any kind of contrast, uh, that is where I would use it. I also went in and uh, added the pit pen to some strands of the hair too, just to kind of make them pop out more, and it looked really nice. I think it added the contrast that the piece needed, because with just the ink, the ink is, you can get a lot of uh, shades and values with it, but the pen was just so much darker that it really added that nice contrast. I also went in with the tiny paintbrush and defined some more strands of the hair with the ink. I think the hair just looked a little plain with the one wash of color, or the one wash of water, sorry. So I went in with a more pure and diluted ink and I just added more contrast and added more strands and totally got lost in all of the tiny details which is just so much fun for me. Doing this hair was so like meditative and therapeutic and it, it reminded me why I like working with ink so much and it was just really nice to kind of get back into that. So I really appreciate that Palafo Packs made this box because it kind of rejuvenated my want to create art for a little while. It really motivated me and it was just really nice. So yeah, I really, really love this box if you can't tell. After all that, I just went in with ink in some places and I defined other places. I added more value to the mushrooms and to the hat and to the skin and it was just a lot of playing around. I tried to use the ink almost like I would use a watercolor. Um, so I would recommend kind of treating it like a watercolor, but again, experimenting first because it's it, it definitely acts different than a watercolor, but it's still pretty similar if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I just had a lot of fun just filling in those places, adding value, adding contrast. I added some dark trees into the background just to give it a bit more oomph. And then the piece was done and I was so happy. Like I said, this whole box is giving me super Halloween-y October vibes, so if you guys also have this box, please show us your work by tagging us in social media. I would love to see if you guys do any kind of spooky art for the Halloween season, or just any art at all. I would love to see what you guys make with this box. Here we have it, another amazing box from Palletful Packs. Like I mentioned before, this is probably my favorite box and maybe even the favorite art that I've made with the Palletful Packs box. I just had a blast and I hope you guys did too. I hope I could help you out with the dip pen a little bit. If you would like to join the Palletful Packs family, please be sure to check out the link in the description box so you can grab your own. This is the Petite box. And if you are already part of our family, please, please, please show us your work on social media. I'm so excited to see what you guys do this month. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me. I will see you guys next month with the next Palatful Petite box. And until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful month. Bye guys.